And welcome, all you lighting sophisticates. We hope you are well and, of course, busy. We're happy to say that the local design community seems to be getting busier with more RFPs coming, and that is great news for all of us. Thank you for joining us today for Aura Shorts. It's our mission and in it to help solve lighting problems. Today, we're gonna to take what sounds like a simple application, lighting a column, and dig down into multiple strategies for those applications. And then we're gonna do the same with dome lighting applications. We'll go over some of the typical lighting strategies and looks and we'll detail some not so typical holes you might find yourself in when lighting curved shapes. Here to help us do that from London, well, from the UK, is David Morgan, founder and managing director of Radiant Lighting. He's brought lots of challenging applications and all the details on how they come out looking great. Afterwards, there'll be a quick Q&A, and then David will show some of Radiant Lighting's solutions as well as design assist capabilities that they offer. If you've not worked with Radiant before, you are going to be amazed. He's going to show the three-dimensional aiming and complex, complex inter-reflections you get from their flex systems. And the optics, by the way, are sweet. Some as tight as four degrees. I'm giving away a little bit on that one. After the product presentation, there'll be another short Q&A and then we're going to share with you the three new teams that have accepted the phase two challenge of the Aura Odyssey, as well as discovered their sponsors and stay tuned with us for that. This is fun. A few general notes before we jump in, please put your questions into the chat area below. Also, we don't typically turn fixtures on during these presentations, as you might have seen with us in the past. It's our belief that light doesn't translate well over video and the Internet. However, if you'd like to get a sample in your hands and see how these perform on your favorite curved surfaces, just ping your rep. We'll be happy to get something in your hands. These products are tried and true, but most of them are new to, North, to the North American market in some way or another. We can't wait for you to see these in action, okay? Let's get started. As I mentioned earlier, we have David Morgan, who's uh, burning the midnight oil and drinking tea, probably to hang out with us. David founded Radiant Architectural Lighting, where he collaborates with leading lighting designers around the world to create lighting solutions for iconic architectural projects. The David Morgan Association Consultancy celebrates its 40th anniversary this year. Congratulations for that, David. Thank you and in that much. time, DMA has worked with hundreds of manufacturers worldwide, winning numerous awards for luminaire design. So David, with all of that, welcome to Oral Shorts. Nice to see you. Good evening, I want to say. Hello, James. And, um, Lovely to see you. Good, 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 good. <laughs> uh, and it's still the sun is out here, so we're, we're, we're winning too. <laughs> David, you like these complex structures, usually from right up close. Tell us all, what's more difficult? Here's your question. Getting the light out onto the architecture as it's curving away or manipulating the beam so that it doesn't overlight or spill? There you go. So that's a great that's question, James. And I think I'm gonna answer that question during the presentation. So I'm Perfect. gonna jump straight in. Thank you very much for your time. So I'm gonna quickly get into the the details of the presentation, but I'll just explain a little bit about how we work. So I'm a luminaire designer for 40 years, or 45 years, and everything we do in Radiant is generally based around luminaire design. So we're always looking for innovative solutions. We work closely with lighting designers around the world. That is our primary focus. And in Radiant, we produce bespoke luminaire productions. We do custom versions of our standard luminaires, and we do made to order versions of our standard systems. Everything we make is made to order so we can incorporate all of the details that you specify on your projects. So today we're gonna to look at how we have dealt with domes and columns, two of the more challenging areas of, of lighting design. And we have some systems which are particularly suited for these applications. So modular high power flexible linear lighting systems are the best tools for lighting domes and columns. And Radiant has pioneered approaches to solving these problems, which I'm going to show you this afternoon. 
So here are some of the projects we're going to have a look at, based around the world in London, in Dubai, Hong Kong, and many other cities. So I'm going to jump straight in. So this is an example of one of our, of our flagship brains, the 3D LED flex, this is the 40. And it's particularly suitable for lighting domes and columns because we can make rings from it. But what's particularly neat is even though we have a circle, we can make the modules adjust independently, which gives us total control over the lit effect on those curved surfaces. So looking at domes first, we see that there are three basic ways to light a dome. We can use a wash of light without any optics, a spread of light. We can use focus light for accent or grazing. And we can add to that cutoff control in snoots, louvers, and so on. So we have some checklists for each of the, each of the kind of applications we're going to look at. So we'll start off with the wash light. <clears throat> so generally, if you're doing a wash light project, we can use mid-light, mid-power LED. We don't, because we're not going to use any optics. So we can just use the most economic, most cost-effective solution with a white reflector to give us a wide beam, 110 degree distribution. With our system, we can have a, a module of four inches in length, which is one of the shortest in the market. We can go from three to 10 watts per module in terms of lumen up, uh, in terms of power consumption, and 270 to 900 lumens per module output. So looking at a typical dome application like this, this is Burberry's head, uh, flagship store in, in central London. So we have a, run, a ring of our system around the edge of this, 100 watts per meter, giving a high intensity distribution, which falls off gradually towards the center. These little spots down here are created by some, <laughs> some other luminaires, some spotlights, which have also been added to the dome. So it's a very effective way of lighting a dome, acts as, as a downlight into the space and produces a really good effect. Here is a church project we worked on recently where we lit the dome at the end. And here you see a typical wash light effect. So it's intense, close to the light source, and then falls away gradually, giving that very romantic, very soft, very attractive way of lighting a space. And here's the Has restaurant again in London, where we've used, again, the wash light technique to give this high intensity around the edge of this amazing curve, cove, with incredible textured ceiling. So towards the center, it falls away to give that wonderful modeling. So that's the simplest way of lighting a dome of some, or curved ceiling of any kind. But we can also use a focus technique using lenses. So here we're gonna use high power LEDs with TRL lenses from narrow to wide, depending on, on, the, on the requirement. We may want to add some diffusion and we're probably going to use adjustable angle brackets so we can control the distribution very, very precisely. So here's a great project up in Edinburgh. This is part of the University of Edinburgh. So what we've done here, working with the lighting designers, we wanted to emphasize the pictures around the edge of the dome. So here we're using a medium beam distribution lens, which highlights the pictures, but also gives us enough spread to wash the rest of the, of the dome. Here's a grazing project in Hong Kong, Spears and Major. So they wanted to put light across the surface here. So here we're using elliptical lenses because we wanted to get the widest possible spread horizontally and also get as much penetration across the dome as possible. What about color changing, RGBW in domes? So here we need to use a different kind of high power LEDs, something that's very tiny, which we can then use with a color mixing lens. So we tend to favor the Luxian range, Luxian C, Z, Z, and so on, with Gagioni lenses. So here we're talking about 100 to 300 lumens per module, because obviously the efficiency is much lower when we're dealing with RGBW. Probably want to add a bit of diffusion. Definitely want to have some adjustable, adjustability on the brackets. So this is an extraordinary project on one of the Virgin Voyages cruise liners, the Scarlet Lady. So we lit this dome in the middle here. And you can see that the intensity is actually greater in the center. So that's been achieved by using a series of the indiv individual modules with RGBW and individual DMX control of each module. So it's four DMX channels, addresses for each module. 
And that, so that gives them total control, a mixture of wide and medium lenses to give total control over the, over the lit surface of the dome. What about if you want to go to the next stage of control? So focused, but also cut off. Well, then we're still going to use our high power lenses, our high power LEDs, CIR lenses, probably narrow elliptical now because we definitely don't want to get a, a wide distribution. The snoots definitely required, so they could be cut off or they could be angle cut types. Probably got in, don't need any diffusion in this kind of instance, but you definitely need the adjustable angle brackets. So here's a lovely project in a classic uh, building in the centre of London, working with lighting designers who wanted to put light onto, onto the curtain surface and a limited light around the dome. So they didn't want any light in the centre of the dome, they wanted it all to come around here and up the curtains. So here's the, the design of sketches showing the, the design intent. And here's our solution. So we have elliptical beam lenses with a cutoff snoot, giving this very, very tight cutoff and a very, very good horizontal spread. Another project up in Edinburgh, Edinburgh University domes. So here we have three rings of light running around these old domes. So one down here, one here, and one up here, using elliptical lenses to spread the light across the surface. Here's another roof project, this time in Azerbaijan, in Baku. So we were asked to help light these extraordinary roof surfaces of this building in Baku on the, on the Caspian Sea. So these, these petal-shaped roof elements, the shape of the whole building forms the emblem of, of Baku. And the way we solved this one was using lighting running down the gutters between the, the petal segments of the roof. So here you can see two runs of, of our system on each petal, this run writing this petal, this one lighting this petal. Here we have a mix of elliptical and medium beam lenses to give as much wash as possible. And you can see here the light is traveling up the surface as far as it can before the, the surface falls away, um, preventing the light traveling any further. So now we're moving on to, to column lighting, which in many ways is more challenging than, than domes because the lighting system tends to be much, much closer to the lit surface. We're trying to project further down the, down the column. So it's, it's much more of a challenge. So here we're gonna use again, high power LEDs, lenses, with a narrow or elliptical distribution. We may want to use some, some diffusion and we're definitely going to use some snoots and possibly also crossfade louvers because here glare is much more of an issue. So changing the order of priorities, we'll start really with focused and accent lighting for, for grazing. We'll have our cutoff control and generally wash lighting is not going to play a big part in column lighting. So we need to think pretty carefully about the choice of lenses here. So because we're close to, so close to the surface, using narrow lenses can cause problems like this. Using elliptical lenses is likely to give us a much smoother lit effect. Adding crossbow louvers can also create artifacts in the beam, which we, which we really want to avoid. The color of the louver, the crossbow louver, could also influence the lit effect. So here we have black, and over here we have white. So you can see with the white, we're getting quite a lot of inter-reflection and spread light, creating a softer lit effect. We can also add diffusion film. So there's many, many techniques we can bring to bear on these kind of problems. So a typical grazing pro project. So we're gonna use our high power LEDs, our lenses, narrow elliptical, and across, probably using our crossplay louvers. So here's a project in Dubai. Pretty remarkable project. So we were asked to help light these very, very tall columns. I've been told they're actually the tallest unsupported columns in the world, at 37 meters, 222 feet. So at the beginning of the project, we worked closely with the lighting designer and he looked at various manufacturers to see who could come up with the best solution. So this was a mock-up test right at the beginning. On the left, we have the radiant solution. And on the, on the right, we have a solution from a, 
very illustrious German manufacturer. So the German manufacturer does a very, very good job, but you can see the radium uh, product pushes the light further down the column and produces more light at the base of the column. So this is how we did it. So this is the detail. So we've got the LED system running around the column. There's, there's a, we added a snoot to give some glare control, but there's also a DC in the architecture, which prevents a direct view of the LED system. And here's the final installed lighting effect. So you can see the light travels beautifully down the columns. The columns in the center of the project are getting inter-reflections from each other. So they're actually benefiting very much from that. The columns on the outside are only being lit on one side. So they tend to be somewhat shadower from this, from this view. But overall, the lighting designer was really delighted with the effect. Moving now to Brussels. So this is a subway station project. So we've run a ring of light around the columns with glare control and with anti-glare louvers all the, on, on each module. So you can see we're getting some of those artifacts at the top of the column. And of course the cast, the rough cast concrete picks, is picked out by the, the intense uh, and narrow beam distribution. Here in a hospitality project, we have the LED system hidden behind the ceiling, pushing light down these gold textured columns. And because of the texture, the light is picked up very, very far down the column in a very, very effective lit solution. Here's the Imara Hotel in, in Cyprus. So again, the LED system is hidden behind the ceiling. The, the narrow, the elliptical beam lenses are pushing the light down the column. And even though there's sunlight coming into the space, the, uh, the artificial lighting is working really nicely. So here we're using the elliptical beam lenses again. So what about, again, RGBW lighting on columns? So this is a project in, Bel in uh, Berlin, very tall, very narrow columns, so quite a challenge. And up the top here, we have a color changing system, pushing light far down the columns and with a nice puddle of colored light down on the pavement down here. So for this, we're using a range of lenses from Gagiani in France. So these are really fantastic, the 45 millimeter in diameter, very, very efficient, very good color mixing indeed. And here we can see the elliptical distribution, which we use on, on many projects, but they've got a tremendous range of, of narrow beam optics, all of which do a tremendous color mixing effect. And then finally, what about lighting from the column rather than lighting the column itself? So using it as an indirect luminaire. So here we could use mid power LEDs or high power LEDs with a white reflector, adjustable angle. And this is the kind of effect you're gonna get. So the lighting system, our lighting system is hidden away in the column and the light is projected out to light the ceiling in the most effective way. So a slightly different way of, of using a column as a, as a luminaire. So finally, here's the kind of checklist which we would like to see considered really for all, all of these projects. So that there are 10 items on the list and it's really important that these are, these are examined in detail at the outset of any dome or column lighting project. And I think I'm going to stop at that point. So thank you very much for your attention. And uh, David, thank you um, for that. The checklist, by the way, I think also um, probably tr tremendously uh, helpful. Um, and if anyone would like to get a copy of that afterwards, please contact uh, one of us and, and uh, your rep should be able to get it for you. D um, can you talk for just a second, David, about um, the, um, the onboarding of your uh, DMX control and um, how sort of you guys manage that and the requirements once fixtures show up, uh, just so we have a better understanding of that. Also, um, I, and I know you may speak a little bit about it in the next portion, there, there was nothing really to reference scale on the fixtures that you were sharing. And so if you could just speak as you're going through it, I guess either now or going through the next section uh, about scale so we can get a sense of its you know, are those 22 inches tall or are they two inches tall? That, uh, that I guess that's part of the magic too, but <laughs> those are the two questions I have. Okay, uh, please. 
Those, those are great questions. So, and I'll, and I'll certainly go into more detail in the, in the next presentation. So we have four sizes at the moment, from one inch wide up to eight inches in, in, in width. So I'll, I'll talk about that in more depth. But in terms of DMX control, we have a whole variety of different solutions. So we can fit a low voltage four channel DMX driver into our 100 millimeter module. And we use that on a lot of different projects. So it is quite pricey, but it gives you that tremendous control. So pixel control at 100 millimeter pitch. Good, okay. Gotcha. And um, well, I, I, I guess if anyone else has other questions about that part, uh, we can we can get into those. So terrific. Why don't we turn the page and uh, start chapter two? Okie dokie. Off we go. Okay, so I'll just jump through the beginning of this because I think we've kind of dealt with this in the previous presentation. So our flagship range, we call the 3D LED Flex because it's three dimensionally flexible. And this is how it was back in 2018. So we had three different sizes and several hundred different components. So we can use the system, we have versions of the system which can be used indoors, outdoors, and underwater. It's modular, so we can put all the components together in many, many different forms, different optics, different light engines, different mechanical constructions, different glare control solutions. This is where we are today in 2021. So we have now four sizes. We have several more hundred components, which we can combine together in different configurations. And our latest version is the 200 size. So it's 200 millimeters long rather than the 100 millimeter we've had up to this point. And that means that we can get inside line voltage drivers, line voltage power supplies, which for many exterior projects is a huge advantage. So we don't have to worry about remote power supplies. So in the module, we have three of these Gagioni lenses I mentioned earlier. So we've got up to 120 watts of power. There's a huge amount of light for color changing, color tunable and white lighting projects. So the 3D LED Flex system all started with one project, a custom project in, again, in Azerbaijan. So it's the cultural center designed by Zaha Hadid in Baku. And we were asked to look at the cove lighting in the auditorium. So if we just zoom in a moment. So we were asked to come up with a solution to provide all of this highly flexible, curved, high intensity lighting. So the lighting from, the, from these coves provides all the ambient lighting in the space. We were given a brief of using 2,700K LEDs to produce 5,000 lumens per meter and DMX control of every 300 millimeters. And this is back in the days the early days of LEDs, and nobody knew if that was going to really be possible. So we had 12 weeks to come up with a solution, produce prototypes, get them tested, make the tooling, assemble with components, and ship 280 meters of the stuff to Azerbaijan, which we pretty much pulled off. And this is the first iteration of the 3D LED flex, it was the 100 without any lenses. Here is the, the lit effect. Everyone was absolutely delighted, won all kinds of design awards and has been a, uh, a marvelous reference ever since. So here's that uh, Burberry project again. So here's the latest version of pretty much exactly the same system we used on the Baku project. Now it's become a mid-power light engine. So we're getting up to 9,000 lumens per meter. So almost 3,000 lumens per linear foot. Here's that project, that McEwen Hall project. So here we have the lens version, which came along a little bit later. So, so these are both for indoor use. And here we have the color mixing version, which we did the, uh, the Virgin cruise liner with. So using those nice Gagioni lenses. So 2018, we had the exterior version, the IP66 version of the 100, one of two design awards. And this is a great project we did in to the east of London. So it's a shopping mall. And we've produced all of the high intensity lighting behind these perforated steel grids. And here it shows the modular and the linear 
capabilities of the system. So here we have three modules, here we have five modules, and here's the kind of the, the lineup for the whole project. So they're individual modules, groups of two, groups of five, and, and, and individual modules all linked together. And we can do that either with a flexible cable, we can do close linked with ball joints, or spaced out with longer ball joints. So with many, many different possibilities to assemble these modules together for different projects. The modules themselves can be linked to made into, into luminaires by themselves. So this is an RGB projector we developed for um, a gym in, in uh, Trendy, East London to produce all these kind of nice color separated shadows. Here's a version we produced very recently for a hotel in Paris. And extraordinarily, we created these lighting effects by lighting the thing through a chrome grid which has uh, given us lots of ideas for the future and what we can do with these kind of systems. This is one of the projects or the, the new products which we're going to introduce at Frankfurt last year, but of course the show was fine, was cancelled. So this is our four degree projector. So we can do this in IP20 and IP65, in the 100 and in the 40 size. And we also have another solution from Gagiani, which gives us a higher efficiency in a three to four degree beam. So we have a lot of different solutions in those very, very tight beams, which are now becoming so popular. So in the 40 size, which is our mid size, we have the largest number of options. So here's that nice Hong Kong project again. So here you can see the, how we did that with this lens version and color coordinated all of the mechanical parts to tie in with the color scheme of the of the project. This was the first project where we developed a crossplay Luma. So this is Dior in Riyadh, so it's a concession in Riyadh, working with Metis Lighting from Milan. So they work with a lot of the high-end fashion brands. And in this particular instance, we were lighting this chain curtain from behind this cold curved cove. And there's the, the very first uh, 3D LED flex crossplay louver. So th th we now have so many different versions of the snoots. So we can extend the height. We have different numbers of louvers. We can have two color louvers. We can cut the angle. All kinds of different options. This is a George Sexton project in the south of of, of the UK, using exactly the same kind of system we used on that uh, that Dior project. So we're up here in these curved coves, lighting these beaded curtains. So we're creating both a decorative effect an ambient lit effect, and also functional lighting as well. Here is the, uh, the subway station in, in Belgium, and this is how we did it with the crossplay louvers on the IP66 version of, of the 40. And here is the, uh, the Chutney Mary, so the IP20 version of the 40 with the crossplay louvers. And here, this is the Hammersmith Apollo. It's a big event space in, in the west of London where we did uh, both the foyer and the auditorium with our 3D LED flex 40 in RGBW. So we lit all these coves and you can see it's a wide and powerful wash of light. And if we just zoom in, so there you can see the module. So this is in the center of each module, we have four LEDs with a white reflector and a softly diffused cover to give that punch and smoothness to the distribution. There's Gagioni lenses again, there's 45 mil Gagioni lenses either with brackets or, or without. And this is the latest lens, color mixing lens from Gagioni, it's 32 millimeters, fits, fits perfectly into our 40 size, both indoor and exterior applications. So we'll be using this lens extensively in the future. It opens up a lot of potential in terms of smaller size, lower cost, but still with that excellent color mixing performance. Here is a Google project, so it's Google Meeting Room in King's Cross in central London. And we're lighting these dark purple curtains all the way around the, the meeting rooms using the 40 with those color mixing um, modules and those Gazzioni lenses. So here's a nice project where we have individual control of each module. So all of the lighting is, is at the base of the facade. It's a perforated steel facade. The light bounce goes up behind the, the perforations, bounces off a white reflector, and then comes down again, giving that incredibly even and intense lit effect. And here is how we did it with the double spacing. So that each module has a four channel GMX controller, so we can give that individual pixel control. And the wider spacing 
was required in order to meet the budget. The wider spacing reduces the cost per meter. Here's a great animated use of the three-dimensional electric 40 in light art installation. So here in each module, you have a DMX controller with a single DMX address, a full red LED light engine, a narrow beam Gagiani lens, and a deep anti-glare snoot to give that completely cut off and intense lit effect. Strasbourg Cathedral, here we have individual modules with color chain tunable modules. So we have two warm and two cool LEDs in each module. And they're being used to light the angels and the archangels on the facade of Strasbourg Cathedral. So miniature projectors pointing back at the surface of the building. So the 25, this is our smallest size. So here we have a project from Shula Shuk in Australia. This was our first Australian project and it's double spaced modules of the 25 IP20. I thought that they had specified that in order to reduce costs, but in fact, they've done it to give this lovely scalloped effect. And here's a hotel in London, again, double spaced. And you can see even with that double spacing, you're still getting pretty good uniformity. So finally, we're gonna go on to our, our Centura system, which was introduced in 2018. And the difference between the 3D dead flex and the Centura is the Centura only bends in one plane, not in two. So it's two dimensionally flexible, not three dimensionally flexible. And we use this to make rings of light and curved lines of light through space. It's highly, highly controlled lighting. So it's very similar to the 3D LED Flex 40, but in, a, in a, an appearance which could be used as a decorative product. So it can be used, it could, it's designed to be used to be seen. So surface mounted or suspended, Again, it's modular, and as time goes by, the number of components will increase. So I show you, so we started off looking at 40 size. This is the 60 size, which is built around those same 45 millimeter Gagiani lenses for color changing applications and tunable white applications. We can double space them. And here are some of the projects we've recently completed with the system. So this is a high-end, lawyer's office in the city of London. So you can see here the Centura is being used to wash down the curtains. Here it's being used in these elliptical shaped breakout areas. And you can see here it's washing down the curtains housed in this little cove outside the, the breakout area, working really nicely. Double space modules. So this here, the Centura is being used very much as a technical luminaire. So we're, we are putting light onto these work surfaces from luminaires mounted up in the ceiling. So for that, we created a custom version of the Centura. So it's, a, it's an extra deep module, super tight beam LED, uh, lenses and light engine and super deep uh, anti-glare uh, louver. So you can see up here, there's not a hint of any sp uh, spill light, plenty of light on the work surfaces and no lights at all getting onto the screens of the um, the monitors in this TV monitoring station. So we always thought this was this would be the kind of ideal application for Centura being used in a high-end residential project to lights in kitchens and so on. So here we have gold finished louvers, black finished metalwork, uplighting and downlighting onto the kitchen surface. And then finally an upscale dentist's uh, practice in Harley Street. So what we have here are elliptical rings of, of Centura, up lighting, which is tuna, color tunable, and down lighting, which is fixed color, but with this gold finished louver. The up lighting is controlled wirelessly by Cassambi. And in the corner here, you can see one of our linear systems also contributing to the, to the up light. So it's really a perfect project for the Centura showing it as both a technical luminaire, but also a decorative luminaire, which, um, which I think opens up the possibilities to a very, very wide range of applications. So thank you very much indeed for your time. Spectacular, spectacular, David. A uh, couple, of, a couple of questions. You were just showing tunable white with the Centura. Um, I realize you said that the, the Baku Cultural Center was done some time ago and you prototyped one of the lines now. Would it be possible if you wanted to re-spin that same job 
to do it in a tunable white that you could do it with that same profile or would you even have something smaller now? Cause it looked like that was kind of small. Yeah, it's a good, it's a very, that's a very good point. I mean, in the time that we, since we introduced the very first system, the efficiency of LEDs has pretty much doubled, I would say. So whereas we needed 10 watts per module to achieve that 500 lumens, we could probably, we can now do that with, with 40 size at, uh, at 40 watts a meter, uh, four watts a meter a module. So yeah, I mean, absolutely. We could, we could, we could do tunable white in that, in that project using the 40 or the 100 um, as required. A whole, a whole different job. And also that, uh, that the Strasbourg, uh, Strasbourg, if I'm saying that correct, those angels, did you yeah. say that was tunable white also, or that was static? That is tunable white. So at different times of the day or at different times of the, the evening and night, they have different scenes uh, for warm or for cool. It's a very spectacular piece of lighting. Uh, even, even those those photos make you just uh, feel good about it. Um, well, well, thank you for this very informative presentation. Thanks for uh, burning the midnight oil, so to speak, to have... Uh, have some time with us uh, this evening. Um, there is another question that popped up. Do the column grazers only mount to a horizontal surface, 90 degrees to the column surface, ceiling and floor, or can the fixture mount to a vertical surface off the column? I think I'm saying that right. Of the column, vertical surface of the column. That's I think we have a bracket for almost every application. We've been asked to do so many different ways of supporting our products. So yeah, the answer is always yes. We, we, we can do it, we have done it, we're gonna do it. And, and if um, perhaps if you'd like more information on the bracket, uh, Michael, we can, we can get that for you too. If you have something in mind you, uh, you're considering, thank you for that. Um, friends and neighbors, okay, uh, again, David, please stick around. Um, we are now going to jump into the second uh, piece of our uh, little soiree this afternoon. And that means that we are now going to share with you the Aura Odyssey challenge as it continues. We are starting phase two of the challenge and about to reveal the design studios, their themes and their challenges. But wait, if you're not exactly sure what that means, the Aura Odyssey please check out on our website, we finally put a page together, a link that has all the videos from the first challenge. It talks about what the challenge actually is, what the mission is. And now you're gonna, if you watch that and see this, you'll have the full story as we continue on. And now you're going to see uh, which designers got which uh, theme and who their sponsors are. And um, I think you're gonna really enjoy this all the way around the board. So sit back and enjoy, please. Thanks, Carl. Welcome Spivak Architects family, also known as our park and recreation team. It's time to preserve human culture and create experience centers for the incoming population. Another dynamic solution from Tivoli is the Lightsphere True RGBW, an inspired twist on a legacy product. Tivoli, the future of tomorrow is today. Welcome Lighting Workshop, also known as our art and virtual reality crew in the new world. Each crew will design a portal and walkway that will be able to take inhabitants to the experience centers in the campus using the themes and product solutions provided. Crew. So we're doing art and virtual reality. We're partnered with Kelvix. So, yay! To create your own new art with light so that your name can be among those that we have been tasked to preserve. With the future of our history at stake, Kelvix will stand at your side to bring your vision to life. We're asking for your help. We need you.
It's a hard day. Hair out like you just That's it. Oh my god, yes. Oh, it actually is now. Oh, cool. Oh my god. The beat. Yeah. Oh, here we go. This is probably the one that does all the tape. So cute. Welcome, Lumen Architecture, also known as our music and theater crew. It's the same volume and the size. One is lighter than the other one. Upon entering the portal, feature vision, visitors will travel through the walkway, leading them to the activity of choice. Oh. Astronaut ice cream bar. Mm. Where'd you get these guys? <laughs> this is real? This is <laughs> Okay. We are delighted to have been asked to work on this exciting new theatre project on Planet Red by Blaney Rinker Associates around the auditorium. The 3D Netflix system provides up to 3,000 lumens per linear foot. With 2,700k. However, if we find ourselves in some part of a multi dimensional universe, we may need to do some further. Oh, sorry. Oh, no. Okay. And voila, there you have it. That is Oblaney Rinker's shorts for this hour. As a reminder and courtesy to you and your time, we really, really would like your feedback. If you have any at all, please email us at questions at orashorts.com. Remember our complete library of Aura Shorts is available 24 seven for your reference on the Oblaney Rinker Associates YouTube page. We also keep our Pinterest page stocked with fresh images from our manufacturing partners just like some of the wonderful projects that you saw today. So if you're looking for something to spark your in, in your intelli your your get up and go juices, check us out there as well. Mark your calendar for our next edition of Aura Shorts, June 3rd with a surprise manufacturer and our first reveal for the Aura Odyssey Phase 2 challenge. Exciting stuff. David, once again, thanks for all your time and energy put into this. Everyone, we certainly again appreciate and uh, you're spending time with us. Take good care. And we will see you again next time. Until then, be safe. Enjoy the nice weather. Take care.